Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, I do videos on creepy and disturbing things. Today we're going to talk about the extremely controversial and banned anime that's kind of been going around the internet lately called Shoujo Tsubaki, or Midori. In case you saw the film and you have no idea what happened and you just want an explanation, or you don't really want to watch the film but you want to know what happens, this video is for you. I'm also going to explain the ending and talk about possible interpretations. Shoujo Tsubaki translates to The Camellia Girl. The story takes place in the 1920s and follows 12-year-old Midori. She comes from a poor family. Her father is gone, her mother is very ill, and so she sells flowers on the street. Hence the name the Camellia Girl. One day a creepy old man approaches her and tells her that he can help her if she ever needs it. And coincidentally she goes home to find her mother is dead, having been half eaten by rats, which they show all of in the movie. A lot of people said that this was the most disturbing part for them because they kind of show the mom being eaten by rats and everything and yeah it's really gross. I didn't think it was that bad though. Not knowing what to do now she goes to meet that mysterious man that had just offered to help her. This leads her to a traveling street circus that lets her stay with them. All the characters in the circus are pretty much pure evil. They take to abusing and humiliating Midori including a lot of sexual abuse. There's a pretty graphic scene of child rape when one of the circus performers, a man with no arms and his face wrapped in bandages like a mummy, attacks Midori one night while she's sleeping. Then there's this horrible scene of puppies being brutally killed. For me personally, that was the most disturbing part of this movie. I'm super, super sensitive to animal abuse, but since it was just an animated movie and just a drawing, even I was able to handle it. But yeah, it was really gross and really disturbing. But then of course they proceed to eat the puppies in the stew that night and laugh at Midori when she cries out in horror after she finds out. She is then abused a lot more and Midori eventually gets sick and the circus is starting to lose money. So they bring in this magician to join them and it turns out that he can do real magic. This magician takes a liking to Midori and then there's some really creepy scenes of them making out and they soon agree to get married, even though she's 12 and he's a grown man. She sheepishly tells her creepy husband-to-be that she's not a virgin. I think that's actually probably one of the most messed up parts about this movie other than the animal abuse because like being a bunch of times does not count as losing your virginity. Midori starts to get more confident as she now has her magician file husband to protect her and she starts standing up to the other circus performers when they start to come at her and try to abuse her. Of course this doesn't turn out well and they start beating her up and humiliating her some more. But her husband intervenes and magically turns her into a giant to stop them from hurting her. Soon after we then see Midori eating something from a bag after she gets money from her husband and the armless mummy guy approaches her and tells her that he's actually in love with her. Magician pedo husband sees this and kills the armless guy brutally by making him sink into quicksand. It scares Midori to see her husband straight up murder someone, but he convinces her to forgive him and not to tell anyone. A filmmaker then comes to offer her a starring role in his new film, offering her a better life where people will be nice to her. She is interested, but her husband rips up the business card. When she tries to put it back together, the magician husband then hits her and forces her into a tiny glass bottle. The magician then performs alone that night, and he's already grumpy, so he gets mad at the audience too using his magic to turn them all into these mutated creatures and a lot of them explode guts everywhere and bleed and shit and this is the part that's just very very weird and confusing. After that whole shebang he takes Midori and they're going to leave the circus together. In a very confusing turn of events everyone is now super friendly and Midori happily says goodbye to the circus performers as if they haven't been abusing and humiliating her all this time. Her husband tells her to wait while he gets some food for them but he gets caught by a mugger on the way back and he is then stabbed to death. Midori doesn't know it or see this happen. She thinks that he just abandoned her too, so she walks around and we find she's stuck in this endless loop. Suddenly we see all the circus performers again and they're laughing at her. But I think this might not actually be happening or it's some sort of hallucination. She gets a stick and tries to beat them all to death, but they all start vanishing randomly. Her husband is there taunting her with them. They disappear, Midori is alone, and we hear her cry out. And that's the end of this 48 minute film. So after reading lots of theories and watching lots of videos on this, I came up with my own personal interpretation of what I think the ending means. I think Midori basically went crazy. She has dealt with so much in her life. She was dealt a really bad hand of cards. And then every time something even slightly good happens, it's ripped away from her very quickly. Even though her husband is a 
file and super abusive. She has been treated so poorly before him that she doesn't realize how evil he is. And she sees him as maybe the only one that could possibly protect her. So realizing this and realizing that she's all alone, yet again, she hallucinates all these characters from the circus coming back. And then sadly, since her husband is with them laughing at her, she realizes that he was one of the evil ones all along and feels even more despair and more betrayal. I believe that all those pretty trees we see at the ending montage is a very, very subtle and gentle implication that Midori is going to die from suicide. Though of course we don't know that for sure. I've seen that theory a lot and I personally agree with it. So that's my personal opinion, personal interpretation of the ending of the movie. There's also another really popular theory that I'd like to talk about. Another really popular theory is that since the magician knew real magic, he never really died. People argue this because he easily controlled and very easily killed people in the movie itself before this. And so therefore it would be really weird if a mugger then randomly took him down so easily. So since he never really died, this entire ending we see is all an illusion, which also makes sense with the circus performers being so randomly happy and nice to her. So then it's theorized that the magician actually killed all the other circus performers quite a while ago. And then he used his magic to give Midori the illusion that they were all happy and saying goodbye to her and wishing her luck. And then the rest of the ending that we saw after that was literally just him messing with her. Basically, it's up to anybody's interpretation, really, but I think we can all pretty much agree that the main message of the movie is to show how depressing and helpless life can be for some people. Now let's talk about all the controversy. A lot of people really, really hate this movie. And I do understand between the child the animal abuse, the body horror, the movie overall is pretty depraved. But I can personally see how a lot of people see it as a work of art. And since it's just an animation, at least nobody was actually exploited, aka children were not actually exploited to make the movie because it's just a drawing of a child. At least no real children were used to depict these kind of things in a film. I also respect the fact that the scenes were not depicted as sexy. They were really, really, really uncomfortable and disgusting. And at least, I mean, I appreciate that because in a lot of movies, if you noticed, the rape scenes, especially rape scenes against a man raping a woman, are often very weirdly sexualized. And lastly, I did kind of like the movie overall because it did do what it set out to do, which was make me feel really, really weird. To me, it wasn't that scary, and honestly, the most disturbing parts weren't that bad, but I think that was because it was an animation and it wasn't real people, and it also just, I mean, I've seen a lot worse too, so maybe I'm just desensitized. So, fun fact, Hiroshi Harada directed, wrote, produced and animated the entire film. It took him five years and all of his life savings to make it. He couldn't get any help because any sponsorships he asked for or any help that he requested, nobody wanted to help him or sponsor him because the subject matter was so taboo and messed up. And when it was first released, it was seen by almost no one. It was banned in a lot of countries, including of course, Japan. There was a very, very censored version of the film for quite a while, but the uncensored version wasn't released until much later. It's actually rumored that a lot of people straight up destroyed the tape when they first got it because they watched it and they were so disturbed by the movie that they straight up like, I don't know, burned it or stepped on it or ripped it apart, I don't know, but that they straight up destroyed it. A live action version of the film was also released in 2016, which I watched some of the scenes from, and I have to say I have no interest in watching the whole movie. If you want to watch the whole film for yourself, it's only about 48 minutes long, and you can find it very easily on YouTube. But of course, watch at your own discretion if you are sensitive to the things that I mentioned before, because it is pretty disturbing that it depicts those things, but it is an animation. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. Please leave me a like if you enjoyed it and I will see everybody in the next one.